Good morning. Good morning. It is my joy and my privilege to welcome you here this morning to Reed City United Methodist Church. Whether you're here in the sanctuary with us or joining us via the web or the radio, we are glad to be worshiping all together. A few announcements before we get started. The first is our um, bulletins every week, even though we don't have a paper bulletin, they are available through email. Um, they are available on our website to download, or if you would like a paper copy mailed to you, please let Carolyn know that in the office, and she will be happy to do that, to add you to that list. Also, a reminder that our Bible study is meeting on Wednesday mornings at 10 out in the, I call it the back courtyard. It's the area just off the kitchen back there. That seems to be the quietest and shadiest and best spot for us to do that. So you're welcome to join us. We are in the um, studying the book of Ezra, and then we'll be moving on to Nehemiah and looking at some of the ways that relates to what we're going through right now. We're also looking for people who might be willing to make some phone calls to our shut-ins and people that we just feel a need to check up on during this time. And if you would be willing to do that, please let me or Carolyn know, and we um, will get you added to that list. You don't even have to decide who to call or any of that. We have somebody who coordinates all of that stuff. Um, you just will get a couple of names to call each week, and that way we make sure everybody's getting connected with. The last announcement I have is that we are working on updating our phone email and address directory. If you have a new email, if you would like your cell phone added, if you haven't received a call in five years and think we might have an old phone number, um, now's a good time to make sure that Carolyn has your correct information. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship by joining together in our call to worship. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. Yea, our heart is glad in God, because we trust in God's holy name. Let us make a joyful noise to God with songs of praise. We praise you, O God. We acknowledge you to be the Lord. Would you stand as you are able, a reminder that we are not singing out loud um, in an interest of trying to not spread anything, but we invite you to sing in your spirits or to hum along, or if the Holy Spirit moves you, feel free to dance about a little bit. Um, stand as we join together in heart, in mind, and spirit, and I am thine, O Lord, on the screen.
You may be seated. A prayer request that I'm going to lift up in the form of an announcement because I forgot it at announcement times, but it's a good thing to pray for too. Tonight starts our conference's annual conference. Normally we would meet in June and we'd be in Traverse City and there'd be people everywhere, but we are doing a virtual conference tonight, tomorrow, and clergy session is on Tuesday. So I invite you, first of all, to be in prayer for that as we have some important decisions to make, as there are some difficult decisions that will be made, as there are some easy things and joyous things that we will celebrate. But pray that the technology works. Pray that um, God is at work in that time of gathering. Um, Also, if you have an interest in watching that, you want to see what's going on, tonight is opening worship. You can find that on, I will send this out in an email as well and put it on our Facebook page, but you can find that on the Michigan Conference website. Um, Opening worship is tonight. Worship services from annual conference tend to be pretty fantastic. And then business starts tomorrow and there's a whole... The website has the agenda and all of those things. So if you have an interest in that, feel free to join. Um, but we, right now, we want to be sure that we lift them in prayer. Let us go before the Lord in prayer this morning. Gracious God, we give you thanks that in the midst of our unknowing, in the midst of our uncertainty, in the midst of all of the things that we are challenged with right now, Lord, you are here. You are walking with us and supporting us and promising to never leave our side. Lord, we lift to you this morning friends and families of our congregation, people who are recovering from surgery, people who are dealing with broken bones, people who are in need of healing, whether it's physical, spiritual, or mental. Lord, we ask that you would send your hand to be at work in those situations. We pray for the things we hold dear in our hearts that we choose for whatever reason not to share. Lord, we know you know those full well, and we lift them up to you. We pray not only for ourselves and our friends and our families, but for our community. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your blessings upon us, that we would experience your love and your joy and your peace. But most of all, we ask that you would help us to see the needs around us. Help us to see where we can be at work in our community beyond ourselves so that your kingdom can come around us. We pray for our nation as we prepare for an election, as we deal with issues around whether to wear masks or not, as we deal with issues around race and other factors, Lord, we ask that you would help us to see one another, help us to share your love for one another, and to be at work and to not get wrapped up in the politics of all of those things. We pray for our leaders and those who seek to become our leaders, that you would pour out your blessings upon them, that you would help them to lay aside their own agendas and follow the path that you have created for us moving forward. We pray for our military, both those who are serving here at home and those who are serving overseas. Lord, we lift them up to you. Strengthen them and encourage them. Fill them with your love and your peace. May they not for one moment feel abandoned at any time. We pray for their families as they endure times of separation. Wrap your arms of love around them and make this time go quickly and smoothly for them. We pray for our world as we all join together in battling this virus as this pandemic continues to plague us everywhere. Help us to be united together in this time, to work together to seek an end to this. Remind us that no matter where our brothers and sisters are, they are, in fact, our brothers and sisters. And help us remain united together in your spirit. We give you thanks, Lord, for the many blessings that you have poured out upon us, both those that we have recognized and those that we have failed to see. 
Make us ever more vigilant of the things that you are doing in our lives so we can come to know you more and more each and every moment of each and every day. We give you thanks especially for Jesus who came to this earth and lived our life and ultimately died our death so that in doing so death itself would be defeated and we could have the promise of an eternal relationship with you. And we come together now in his name to pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to remain seated as we join together in spirit in the chorus, Seek Ye First. Our first scripture reading this morning can be found in the Psalms, Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11 and 45b. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let's the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles and the judgments he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are all in the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, to which he confirmed to Jacob as a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying to you, I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. Praise the Lord. Our second scripture, our gospel reading this morning, can be found in the Gospel of Matthew, the third chapter, verses 31 through 33. He put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his fields. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour 
until all of it was leavened. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We continue our series on the seeds. Um, we talk, Timothy talked to us about where we plant seeds and how seeds grow in good soil. And last week we talked about good seed and the weeds that grow up and choke things out. And this week I want to talk to you about mustard seeds. Mustard seeds are little, teeny, tiny, itty-bitty. They're delicious in sausage and other places like that. And growing up on a farm, I thought I knew all there was to know about seeds. But one of the things that we have never grown on our farm, ever, to my knowledge, is mustard. And so this idea that a mustard seed could grow into a big tree never really meant anything to me. You know, I think about an apple seed and that grows into a tree, but you could fit five or six mustard seeds in an apple seed. It's this tiny, itty bitty little seed. And when you plant it, it grows into a tree big enough that birds can make nests in. So it doesn't mean that it's just a big plant, it's a big, sturdy plant. And we know that God does incredible things with small things. We know that it takes just, we know from scripture that Jesus said if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can say to the mountain, go throw yourself in the sea, and it will do that. Well, I have tried that several times with mountains, and I have yet to be able to do it. I think that my rationale and my reasoning for it might be a little bit off. Um, it also says something about not putting the Lord your God to a test in here, right? But it's this idea that if we just have a little faith, God can do incredible things. Friends, it is so easy as we walk this journey to think of what God is calling us to do, to hear what God is calling us to do, and think, I can't make a difference in that. Have you ever had that? I watch those commercials on TV that are designed to make you cry so you'll give money. Some of them are about animals. We like to joke that, like, I don't know who actually listens to Sarah McLaughlin's music anymore because it just makes you sad. <laughs> um, some of them are about children around the world. Some of them are... Um, the latest ones I have seen are for Jewish people in the Holy Land, elderly Jewish people in the Holy Land. And they're all designed to make you want to help. But I don't know, and I don't know about any of you, but when I see those, I think, I don't know that I can help with that very much. <laughs> that seems way bigger than me. But Jesus tells us that no matter what we think our limitations are, God can do incredible things. Throughout the time of quarantine, I've been reading every Thursday night a children's book, and for a while, for several weeks in a row, I read Parables. It's a book written by a man named Ray Buckley, and he had parables that related to different cultures around the world. And the one with the mustard seed was a little girl who received the seed as a gift from her father. And didn't think much of it, and it got sloughed off onto the floor and then swept out, and then, um, you know, it didn't seem like any big deal, what, what, just a little tiny, barely visible seed. And the next thing they knew, they had this giant plant growing. Friends, God works like that so often. God takes things that seem small and insignificant to us asks us to do something that may just be smiling at somebody. And we think, well, what difference does that make, right? I think of, I always try to be super nice to the cashiers at the grocery store because I don't want their job. Um, I've been there, I've done that, and I know that right now they deal with a lot of really unhappy people. And so I try to smile and I think, well, that was one person, but the person behind me is going to be just as angry as the person before me was. And what difference does it make? But it does make a difference. God takes those little acts and grows something bigger out of them. 
But it doesn't just stop with the mustard seed. In the passage we read, he goes on to talk about the kingdom of heaven being like yeast, right? For many, many years, I thought that if it had yeast in the recipe, there was no point in me trying to bake it. It wasn't going to work. I made a lot of bread that instead of being, you know, nice and lofty and have, was this big. It, um, I'm also the kind of person that buys stuff and then keeps it in my cupboard for years. Turns out if you do that with yeast, it doesn't do a whole lot of good when you try to cook with it. But yeast is this little tiny thing and it doesn't take very much in a recipe to add air and make dough double inside. It's always amazing to me when the recipe says, let it sit for half an hour and dough should double in size. It's like, that's crazy. You know, you got this much and then you got this much. And if you add too much yeast, you got this much, right? But that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. That's what Jesus is wanting us to see and to understand. He uses these things that people can visualize because if he just said, in God's kingdom, God can take a little thing and make big things happen, we'd be like, all right, sounds good. But when he says, take this tiny seed and plant it and this giant bush will grow, add just this little bit of yeast and the dough grows, people are like, I, yes, I know what you're talking about. I've seen that. I get it. It makes sense to us. We are such visual people. But he tells us this because he wants us to understand a couple of things. One, God is awesome and can do things far beyond what we can, we can do or what we even can imagine God can do. And second of all, God takes every little bit of effort that we put into things and does incredible things in our world. A few years back, the annual conference committed to raising a large sum for imaginal malaria. I don't remember quite what it was, but it was over a million dollars. And their rationale was um, nets cost $10 if every church bought one net for every member. So if everybody gave $10, we could easily meet this goal. And the truth is, is that you think of all of the nets that are needed to stop malaria in Africa and places like that, and you think, what's my one little net going to do? Well, by itself, it'll help one person or one family, which is awesome and incredible. But when my net combines with your net, combines with the person sitting next to you, before you know it, we have sent a million nets to help people. Just from one little action, it's this idea that God takes the little bit that we have to give and makes it so much bigger than ourselves. Makes it so much greater than what we can accomplish on our own, which, let me tell you, friends, is good news. Because if we were left on our own to bring about the kingdom of heaven, this would be a sorry, sad place, and we wouldn't have a whole lot of hope of doing that. But the good news is Jesus is saying, look, God is here. I'm not asking you to do this on your own. I'm asking you to join into what I am doing. I'm asking you to be a part of this. And I'm asking you to trust that I can take the little bit that you have and do something incredible. Friends, during this time of quarantine and um, reimagining worship, I often think, what difference does that make? What little bit I'm doing? And I can tell you that there have been times, and I think most other pastors are dealing with this too, there have been times in the last months where I go, I'm not doing enough for what they pay me. I should be doing more. And I think all I do is read a devotional every day on the internet, and what difference does that make? But then... I hear from people who are uplifted by those things, and I hear from people who have been disconnected from the church who are connecting back in through those things, and I can see now that even when I wondered if I was doing enough, God was at work 
beyond what I could do. Now, if I said, I'm going to read this daily devotional and we're going to reach 50 people every day and I'm going to bring in new people and we are going to convert people for Christ through my doing this, this is my purpose, I probably wouldn't have achieved it. But because I said, well, God, this is what I can do. Take this and make a difference. God has done so much more than what I imagined I could. That's what I want you to hear today. Even when it feels hopeless, even when we think that what we do doesn't make a difference, even when we look at the need around us and we think this is more than anyone can handle, the good news, friends, is that even if it is more than anyone can handle, it is never more than God can handle. There's that saying, God will never give you more than you can handle. I hate that saying. I don't think that it's accurate at all. The reality is, is that God gives us more than we can handle all of the time. But he helps us handle it. He walks with us. He never gives us more than he can handle because there isn't anything that he can't handle. And when we walk that journey, when we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives and to walk alongside us, it is incredible what we can do both in our own lives, but more importantly, for God's kingdom. You never know what word you say might set someone on the right path to meeting Jesus. You never know what kind, small kind gesture might start a chain reaction and, really, and heal someone from a struggle that they have. You never know how God might be at work in the smallest, tiniest little thing. So when Jesus tells the disciples and the crowd that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, he is not teaching them about agriculture. He's not teaching them about biology and how that all works. He's trying to help them understand that every little bit goes a long, long way. And when we allow God to take what we have and create something bigger and better and new out of it. Incredible things will happen on this earth. I encourage you to think of the things in your life that you can do that are mustard seed things. Right? We think of how God might be calling us to do things and things seem big and overwhelming and we go, I can't do that. Oh, God might be asking me to stand up and share the word. I can't do that. God might be asking me to tell a friend about Jesus. I, that seems like too much, Pastor. I can't do that. God might be asking me to pray out loud at a meeting. Nope, that is not my thing. I can't do that. But what Jesus wants you to understand, what God wants you to know, is that if you just put a little effort in, incredible things will happen. If you, um, instead of maybe going to your friend and saying, I think you need Jesus, we go to our friends and we say, it seems like you're having a rough time. You need somebody to talk to you? And when we say, do you need somebody to talk to, it really means you need somebody to listen. Or when we're called upon to pray, maybe we are not there, but maybe we start by reading a scripture verse. Or maybe we have a printed prayer that we read and we get more comfortable with that. You see, God takes our little steps and grows us to the next step so that what seemed impossible becomes easy and old hat. God can create magnificent things out of what seems like nothing. The mustard seed seems like nothing. It's this little tiny thing, but I can tell you, you bite down on that. Not only will it grow into something big and powerful, but if you bite on it, it's got a pretty powerful taste. And you'll be wanting some milk or something to help wash that down a little bit. We think that what we have to offer is small and unimportant, but God says all of that matters. All of that is important. And God doesn't ask, ask us to change the world on our own, but to be part of what God is doing 
here in our church, in our community, and around the world. Every little bit helps, and all those seeds can become giant trees, and the yeast can spread and grow. Amen. Would you stand as you are able and join in heart and spirit um, in our song, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart?
At the moment, there are so many things in our lives that can seem so overwhelming, and we can feel hopeless and what we have to work with. But friends, I'm begging you to hear Jesus' words, to understand his meaning, that if we put just a little bit of effort in, God will take that and grow it into something far beyond our capabilities. May you have faith in God. May you know that you are never alone in this journey. And may you feel God's love through it all. Amen. Amen.